Hey, Legends, this is Magnus. How y'all doing today? Oh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. So, well, this is for my 140 subscriber challenge, and I apologize for being so late. You, you Legends are amazing. As, as of the recording of this video, I am at 183 subscribers right now. Thank you so much for the support. So, for, for my 140 subscriber special, I am doing a tier list of all Pixar movies, from Toy Story all the way up to recent Elemental that dropped on Disney+. Plus. As, as you all may know, if you've seen my previous tier list, I have at the very top peak Pixar, which is, is to me the best movie Pixar ever made, so usually only one movie goes up here, S, S best, A excellent, Good, B for good, C okay, D not good, not bad either, E just bad, F terrible, and the bottom haven't seen it. So, um, so this is going to be a very good one because as you all hopefully know, Pixar is, it is very close, near and dear to my heart. Hurt apart from Disney, Pixar is one of my most favorite animation studios ever and has some of my favorite movies ever. And if you've seen my video from a long time ago, like maybe, oh man, five years ago or, or plus, uh, it also has my favorite uh, franchise. Uh, it has my favorite like movie series, basically, you know, of all time. So, let's get this party started. But before I do, subscriber question, which one is your favorite? And, and I am going to work on getting caught up. However, this is a full certainty that I'll be back back for uh consistent videos because of my new work schedule that i have now let's get started starting and this is going in release order of each movie so starting with toy story Ooh, toy story okay this one is going high up okay this one's going high up i'm at least putting this in best because by in the toy story franchise alone the first toy story one is my favorite it's my favorite of, of all four movies so i'm just gonna start it off putting toy story at in s it's favorite character buzz lightyear here uh even though i often seem to be more like woody at, at times yeah i like the story of toy story as well just uh getting over differences uh friendship like stuff like that that it was very. It was a simple start. A simple start to a movie. Simple start to a studio. But it did it well. A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life. Like, now I I feel enough people um appreciate this movie to call it un to to call it to not call it underrated because because all right is it the best Pixar movie made? No. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in A. I'm gonna put it in A because I think this is an excellent film. Um. And and I'm on the side that says a bug's life is better than ants, which DreamWorks made. And at some point, I'm gonna have to do a DreamWorks movie uh, tier list as well. Favorite character in Bug's Life flick? You're gonna find out more and more, like as we go through the list and in media in general. I tend to my favorite characters tend to be the main character of the story. Of the story, um, the villain Hopper, really good villain. In, in terms of um he's intimidating he, he he is able to pull off a front the entire entire movie and even when his uh even when the weakness is exposed he doesn't like fully break down he the only thing he's afraid of is bir birds which is the only thing that can pretty much the only thing that can kill him so by far our our flick great character hopper great villain toy story 2 Okay, many people hold Toy Story 2 on a high accord, and I, do, I completely understand why. Hmm. Oh, man, where do I want to put this? It introduces Jesse, which I, I can give it that, and it gives us Bullseye, Stinky Pete. Um, but I'll say, I wouldn't say it's the bet. It's the soundtrack. Okay, I, got, I also got to bring up the soundtrack. I'll put it in, I'll put it in top excellent i'll put it on a above bugs life the the soundtrack for also these movies are great 
friend of me, excellent song. When somebody loved me, he heartbreaking song. Oh, makes you think about the toys you've let go over the years. Um, time of your life from Bugs Life, life really good one. Randy New Randy Newman, my gosh, Rand Randy Newman. Oh, he knew how to make music for Pixar. He knows what to do. Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Okay. Oh, Monsters Inc. I think I gotta put this in. I gotta put this in excellent too. Um, let's see. Uh. Is it better than Bugs Life? Um, I think so. I, I think no, nah, it's not better than Toy Story 2. I really like Monsters Inc. Um, favorite character Sully. Sully's my favorite character in this mo movie. Mike is a great side character. Boo is just a great like <laughs> uh, ch child character. The uh, tag along. Uh, Randall. Randall. Is a good obvious villain, uh, Mr. Warnoose, a cool twist villain, which is why I'm like, okay, there's like when people talk about twist villains, like that, I say there's a big difference between Disney twist villains and Pixar twist villains. There is a stark contrast between the two, two, because usually Pixar twist villains, in in my opinion, are better. Better they do it. It comes out of nowhere, but it makes a bit more sense, and and they're more compelling in Pixar than than um when Disney twist villains do it. But it depends on which movie. Um, the soundtrack for Monsters Inc. Another good one. Um, if I didn't have you, that's a nice end credit song. And also, oh, okay, like I'm. I'll bring this up. I'll probably later on with other movies, but one thing I really miss is, especially with these three movies, and I think a few that will be coming up as well. With Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., and Buzz Life, it, the end credits always had those bloopers where the characters were literally, they made the sections where they, it was like they were acting in this movie. He, like, these were, like, and so I saw some like comments and stuff people say they didn't like those because it took them out of the immersion first of all the movie one the movie's already o over that's one two two i thought it made look made it better just to see the humor of how if this was acted out and if this was like a bunch of actors how that would be what that would be like like and i just love those sections because <laughs> it just it got a laugh out of you so next Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo, okay, Finding Nemo, ooh, darn, uh, I'm gonna put, oh, yeah, I'm gonna put it, it's, it, I'd say excellent, and it's going below Bugs Life, like, um, so, I re I do like Finding Nemo, um, I think, I think Randy Newman did another song in this, uh, Beyond the Sea, -y. um, and I was just listening to it while I was out, uh, kayaking one, one day, and it just brought it just made the made the trip feel so so nice and soothing um the store the story itself of a good one um it sh it shows the dangers of he like helicopter parents but also shows like both Marlin and Nemo are wrong in their own, own right right for the events of the, of the movie you understand where Marlin's coming from but you also understand where Nemo's coming from um, um and Dor dory amazing amazing care amazing character ellen does a great job of with her she just a great side character um and it's like dory's the first character i ever like the first one i've ever experienced with like um short-term memory loss or what would i think what most would say as a disorder like a character with a disorder now that i think about it it would seem like uh, Dory is the very first character I ever seen like that, and it's nice. Um, so, so another good one. I don't, no, I don't think Finding Nemo got the blooper se section. I think that if they did, that would be pretty funny. But there are certain movies in here that I wish if they did make it, I would want to see. And I'll point that out later on. Um, Incredibles. I put Incredibles in best. Incredibles one is epic. 
bro. <laughs> I lo- oh man, this movie is awesome. Um, it's just a classic superhero. Mo- it's a classic superhero movie. Oh, it it basic. <laughs> the Incredibles basically does Marvel's Fantastic Four. <laughs> It to a greater degree. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like it it nails the super the super family perfectly. <laughs> like, oh, Syndrome is amazing villain. Syndrome's an amazing villain. Um, you understand where he's coming from, but you understand that he's also the villain of this story. Frozone is awesome. You can't go wrong with. Honey, where's my super suit? You can't, you can't go wrong with that. You can't go wrong with that scene. My, every time, I promise you, every time, whether it be in the mo- when the movie itself plays, or if one of my family plays just that clip, we all start an argument. We all start an argument. Half is on, half is on Frozone's side, saving the city. The other half is with Honey trying to save the dinner. Every time, every time. <laughs> <laughs> this movie just made made such an impact. <laughs> oh, so each character is great. Favorite character in the movie. Oh, favorite character in the movie. Um, I think my favorite might be might be Bob and his char- Robert and his character arc in the movie, he, because I can understand I can understand why he would like miss the the glory days of being a superhero. You basically went from be, being like getting the key to the city you were basically like you seem to be um like superman of dc e um basically superman or spider-man of marvel marvel you went from the top hero to a a a man a man working at a desk taking orders from a midget an angry midget <laughs> oh but and also like this this movie also touches on um like i like how the powers work work how the how they chose the powers in connection to um they did the powers in connection with the personalities of each which honestly like when i see my when i watch my hero academia i'm always reminded of the Incre- the incredibles of how the quirks impact the character's personality and how they're connected anyway soundtrack is also real good good i like the sound soundtrack um all right next cars cars pretty much everyone says this is an under like okay either no not underrated a overhyped i think this this one is deemed an overhyped franchise because of when it came out and i see this also with some other movie series like if it didn't come out the way that it did it wouldn't be as big. And I can see that argument, but I really like this one. I think I'm going to put Cars. Is it the best? Is it the best? I'll put it. I'm going to put it in excellent. And I'm going to put it above. I'm going to put it above Monsters, Inc. Because I really. My brother really loves racing. Because ever since he saw Cars, he got upset. He's obsessed with. with multiple things including other stuff like mario oh um especially mario mario kart art and i think cars had something to do with it like when, when he see watches turbo nascar racing i assure you ca- cars had had something to do with it because he loved he loves this franchise um and i really like it too favorite character lightning mcqueen hands down mater Mater is, is a top, he's up there when it comes to side characters. He's up there. He's one of the greats. Um, let's see the story arc with Lightning McQueen, a very good good one. A a um egot an, an egotistical rookie being humble will get like getting a chance out of the spotlight of fame and and being in the real world. Well, yeah, real good one um soundtrack also very good um darn i forget his name oh uh, but i always listen to okay one rascal flats life is a highway listen i love listening to that when i'm going on a long trip like when i'm doing a, a trip that's gonna be hours I'm, i want to start that trip off by listening to life is a highway okay 
because it gives me hype for the ri the ride or the drive to come. Um, then when you find yourself, oh my goodness, that um, I like that that one too. I like that one. The Cars has the movie bloops, the movie clips at the end of the mo movie. I yes it does. Yes it does. I think it does. Darn, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, no, I don't think. Does it? Yes, it. No, no, it doesn't have movie bloopers. It has, as like pro epilogue scenes. It has epilogue scenes, which are all which are pretty good, referencing the previous movies that came before it. Toy Story, Bugs Life. Um, yeah. So it referenced Monsters Inc. as well. Yeah, that was really good. Um, overall, a good movie. Chick Hicks. Oh my goodness, the Chick Hicks in this movie. Textbook cheater. Textbook cheater. You just, you love to. I hate. I hate him, but it's not. He, he's not exactly a, a character I love to hate. I just hate him. I just. I just hate him. I just hate him. Ugh. I just hate him. Uh. Ne next. Ratatouille, Ratatouille. Whew. All right, I have seen Shea Frillis Productions video on Ratatouille and his his opinion that Ratatouille is Pixar's magnum opus. Now I can understand where he got that from. I can under I can understand and because this is a very good film. Is it is it the magnum opus of the of Pixar? Me personally, no, no. Uh, okay, now oh, the the story of Ratatouille. How do I want to put this? It gives you thinking about cooking. It makes you want to either cook something or go out to eat. The food. Okay, it's only in certain other movies where the food looks better than than in Ratatouille. Only in specific movies I'm talking about, but. This one just solely about cooking. Oh man, Ugh. this makes you want to cook so, something very good. Um, this makes you want to eat, and it inspired like ever since like watching Ratatouille, I just love um like taking a moment to to smell the food food and truly taste it like Remy did, like taking in the te the texture and the taste of the food that I'm eating or the drinks, like truly taking it in. Um. I'll will give it the I'll give it the respect it deserves. I'll give it the respect it deserves and put it in best. I'll give it that respect. Um, the the soundtrack is also very good. Um, the, just being mostly instrumental, except for La Fe, La Festin. That's a, that's a very good song. Um, favorite character Remy. I think Re, Remy's my favorite favorite character in it. Um. Skinner, funny villain, Anton Anton Ego, a a um his he he demands presence. His presence is demanded when he comes on screen. He I often get chill chills when he walk walks in. Uh, otherwise, one thing okay, one thing I would want to see. Um, look if. If Pixar or Dis unfortunately, if Disney pressured them to do this, I would honestly see this. If y'all, if they did a prequel to Ratatouille or just a a movie based on Gusto, I would want to see that because all we have seen of Gusto is Remy's interpretation of Gusto and Gusto in commercials. We never know what. Gusto Gusto himself was was like like and I would want to actually see that like how he became the youngest chef ever to earn a five star rating how he got how he became a father and didn't know it like I'd want to see that honestly whether that be in a movie or a TV series just I I think that would be interesting I would actually want I would want to watch that so um other, so next Wally Wally all right 
So, many people also love this one for good reason. I will put it, I'll put it up, I'm going to put it above Ratatouille because I like this one. And one of my sisters, this is her favorite Pixar movie. This is her favorite Pixar movie of all time. So, now, this, this movie brings up some stuff in me because when people, often when I hear people just talk about, um, like Pixar or Disney making original ideas and stuff, and then they bring up something like Wally. It 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 takes it 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 sends an itch through me because the message of Wally is something that has been made before it multiple times. The warnings about taking care of the Earth, the danger of AI, all that it's been done before. It's just that the execution of it in Wally. He touched so many people. Well, so, oh, the execution of Wally's story is excellent. It, but when people want to use Wally as an excuse, like make something original, you are actively that is not helping your case. You are that's not helping you. That's not an example. Well, that's about execution. That's not fully about originality. And second. And of course, nothing is nothing is truly ever original anyway. But favorite character in Wally, favorite character, Wally himself. Wally himself. I think my my sister's favorite. I think is Wally, but it might it might be tied with Eve. Um, and then uh, side characters love Cricket. Love like the, uh, or. The cockroach, the cockroach, truly can. That cockroach can survive anything, as like the the like real life cockroaches. Um. Oh, favorite side character uh in Ratatouille probably Emil. No, 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 nah. Ty, nah. I like Linguini more than Emil. Emil, uh, Linguini is is fa my fa favorite. I relate. I relate to him a bit. I relate to both Remy and Linguini personally, both of them. But back to Wally. Um, yeah, favorite character, Wally. Favorite side character probably Eve. Eve, even though they can both basically share main lead roles. He, um, Otto. Again, I'm going. I'm probably going to rip. As lo as much as if I've seen Shay Frillis' Shay Productions video or anyone else's video on this, I'm going to at least mention it. He okay, Shay Shay Frillis, I respect his opinion, it, but he was saying that it Otto is the mo is a I think he said he, like Otto is a bad villain, like like it's bland and stuff, dude. <laughs> like or I hear arguments that Otto is not a good villain because he's because of how he follows pro programming and wouldn't use logic to change his mind to go back to Earth. And when I hear this argument, my first thought is he was given orders to never go back to Earth under any circumstances. And with with AI, I pretty much, he got it from directly from the president of the Earth, the president and CEO of Bylog. So basically, no one else outranks that man. No one else. So why would he go against his pro programming and orders? And secondly, second, when people, yes, granted, like AI should be able to make like make decisions and take data in and and put that into account. However, when what happens when AI starts to act of its own accord or for example as we often see with robot takeovers whether it be Terminator Ultron on um dang it ah oh, sorry why can't I think of other examples when I need to usually in dystopian robotic societies when or iRobot when a robot makes the conclusion that humans aren't safe to run themselves when robots think for themselves you start getting prop you end up with problems so so my thing is like i like how auto is complete and he fully obeys his orders no matter what 
because that's something that an AI, a autopilot captain of a ship with, with, um, darn it, how many, how many people were aboard the Axiom, uh, darn, I forget how many, I forget how many passengers were aboard, aboard that ship, but since, um, I'm guessing the Axiom was probably the biggest ship of the by and large fleet. So it had the, probably the most amount of humans humans on it ever. If you're the autopilot of that ship, the risk of him changing, of auto changing his mind and being able to just take humanity back, back of his own accord is a, a, too big of a risk. Because say it went the opposite direction and the earth just got worse for example um what is that movie with will smith and jaden smith um not after i think it, i don't think it's called after earth um when they went back to earth after they polluted it so bad that the entire environment of earth was altered if everything got worse on on earth but but vegetation like vegetation and plants could grow but humans would die and then you use that as logic like okay it's safe to return that's not good that that wouldn't be real good because yes like life life can live probably on an altered earth but can humans live live so so i personally appreciate how Otto was just true to his programming through and through through me personally Anyway, that went on full on ta tangent. Um, the soundtrack in Wally is also very, very nice. Um, and I like how at, pretty much at the start of the movie, it sets the scene with very little, if at all, dialogue, just sound effects. It's, so, and music, and music, of course. So, and the visuals. Of course, the visuals is basically what, that's one of the main things. Wally is an example of that one meme, one meme that I saw where a story, like there's a man carrying this engine and it says like the story of a movie or show is carried by the animation, you know, the visuals and Wally to me is, is an example of that. All right, next up, this is my mom's favorite Pixar movie. This is my mom's favorite Pixar movie and many people love this for the beginning of, for the beginning montage and I understand that. Um, I'm gonna say it's excellent, but where do I... I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it here. Here, that's a safe spot. Um, I like Carl Fredrickson. I like Ellie. Ellie. Um, the stark contrast between the two, how opposites can attract. Mind you, it may not always work that way, but it also can may not work the other way, where the same people don't work out. The same like same personality types don't work out. Um. But I also like the message of this movie, like, um, Carl thought that Ellie's dream was never fulfilled, only at the end to find out that she made a new dream, much like the message in Tangled, um, finding a new dream with Carl, living a life that she was happy to live, that was very, that was very good. Now, my question, okay, I probably gotta just look at the math and be like, one, how old, how old was Ellie when she died? How old is, like, what time does Up take place versus the, versus the montage at the beginning? And then, um, Charles Muntz. I want to know, oh, like, I want to know how, like, I'll probably have to do that research on my own. Um, favorite character in Up? Tied, tied between M Mr. Fredrickson and Russell. Russell. Otherwise, Russell is a is a good side character. He does a good job. Dog as well. Oh, and this 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 show had a lot of dogs in it. So dog lovers were having basically a field day with this because there was a multiple breeds of dogs. It's, Kevin is also great. One th one thing I'm curious about. I'll, Pixar never needs to touch on this, but 
even if it was a short, if they explain what Charles Muntz was talking about when you go into the labyrinth where Kevin lives, what the heck happens in there? Even if it's like, even if you only did it in a, um, in a hallucination type thing where you see somebody go in, but there's so much chaos going around, you can't fully know what is truly happening. What happens when you walk in there? I'm just, that's just my own base curiosity. Charles Muntz as a villain, that is understa understandable. Like, for example, if anyone who wants to say to, like, Charles Muntz is a bad villain, I don't know about that because we all, again, and I'd have to get to that when we get, to, like, if I do a DreamWorks movie tier list and we do Turbo, because I want to also talk about the twist villain reveal in Turbo, which I personally don't have a problem with. But here it's like, Again, it's a matter of perception of the main character when, and the audience when we first see him versus how he actually is. It's, so, the soundtrack is also, it, the, the soundtrack is very wholesome. It's very nice. Inspiring. Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3. I'm going to put this in best... Is it better than The Incredibles? I don't want to say so. I'll play it right here. I'll put Toy Story 3 right here. This move, this movie. Oh, I got feel, I got personal feelings for this movie because, okay, I was a teenager. I was a teenager when this came out, but I wasn't at college, college age yet. I wasn't like right there where Andy was. But whenever I think of Toy Story 3, it the only thing I think about is always the ending of the movie because Andy's speech at the end had me in tears, had me in full tears because I didn't expect it to, I didn't expect him to talk, to say how he felt about Woody in such a deep way. And then the way they end it is just heartwarming to, to any Toy Story fan. Like, oh man. Okay. So. Lotso, good, Lotso, good twist villain, villain. I like that, uh, um, a pr prison breakout, arc, a prison breakout arc, very well done, um, then, let's see, Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2, after Toy Story 1, with Toy Story 3, he, how many how many times does Woody have to prove himself to be right? Or oh, like yes, in Toy Story One, he caused Buzz to fall out the window. No, that's his own fault. Oh, but then when it comes to saving Buzz, the saving Buzz, um, at the end of the movie, there's that. Then with Toy Story Three, oh, like okay. If you've ever seen the the uh, if you've ever seen the channel overly sarcastic productions and the trope talk about idiot plots and the topic of the idiot ball on certain characters, I almost feel like Toy Story three was used that to an extent because I feel like each of the characters that were in the bag in the garbage bag, you did know fully what was happening. Well, Woody was the only one who saw everything that happened, and yet you still don't believe him. You don't believe him. Now, oh, uh, granted, they aren't, like, they, there's good argument to what they're saying, because yes, Andy called, put him in a trash bag, called him junk, yes, but Woody literally, literally saw, Woody saw what was going on, and tried to explain. Oh, ooh. and then to me, to me, the gang got what they deserved being in that preschool, preschool classroom. Okay. You didn't listen to, to Woody. So yeah, to me, you got what you wanted. You, you wanted to get played with. You got played with. You got what you asked for. I'm sorry. I'm not sympathetic. I am not sorry for them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, I'm not like y'all want and the second 
the second that day is over, they want to say we should be in the butterfly room with the big kids. Oh, <laughs> the, oh, the, the true ungrateful and selfishness of, of the of the crew of the of the of the gang is just it makes me upset. It makes me upset. <sighs> Otherwise, very good movie. Lots of very good, very good. Um, oh, soundtrack also very good. Good. No movie, movie, uh, like no movie, uh, blooper scenes in this one, but, uh, like epilogues. Um, so, oh, same with, uh, Toy Story 2 did have the movie bloopers, which were, were great. Um, so, next, Cars 2. Cars 2. One second. Cars 2. This is this movie isn't that bad. This isn't that bad. I'm gonna put it below. Oh, yeah, this is sick. This actually, do I keep? Do I really want to put put Cars 2 in excellent? Uh, I'll put it in good. I'll put it in good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good because yeah, this was. Cars 2 should have been, the the spy side of things should have been a Mater's Tall Tale to me. Even if it's a Mater's Tall Tale movie. If, if you did a Mater's Tall Tales movie and it was the spy plot, I'd be fine with that. But the fact, I have nothing wrong, as you will see with Incredibles 2 when I get to it. I have nothing wrong. There's no, I got no problem. With focusing on a secondary character for the sequel. I have no problem with that. The problem is when you completely shift the story to something that it's not. Because Cars 1 deals with racing. Cars 2 deals with spy work. Racing as a side note. Cars 3 goes back to racing. So, the... World Grand Prix would have been great. The World Grand Prix would have been a great just doing that for Cars 2 and doing it from Mater's perspective. Seeing this from Mater's perspective. I would have been, that would have been great. Now, um for the longest time, for the longest time, okay. When I first saw Cars 2, I was living in another country. And I could only wa I only watched Cars 2, I think, in Spanish. And I didn't fully understand. I didn't understand Spanish. So, so I w we would just watch it over and over in another language. And just, like, get a sense of what they're saying. And get a sense of what was going on in the scene. Um, but, um, favorite character. Favorite character. Probably still Lightning McQueen, but Mater is still a great side, side character in this one. Uh, or main character in Lightning McQueen switched around, but still Lightning McQueen is my favorite. favorite. Um, Fran Francesco Bernoulli is a hilarious, egotistical racer. The, comp the, the fascination with uh, Sally with Francesco, oh, makes sense, makes sense because... Honestly, like that's something I feel like I like every almost every guy runs into when his girlfriend like there's this dream guy that she, that she likes and and then the boyfriend or husband is jealous and I personally I understand that that and I wouldn't take it too pers personally because to me it's fine it's fine if you want to have a dream guy that that you may never get with with it's always good to have a dream so not a problem by me. Uh, villains. For the longest time, I didn't fully... Uh, I need to watch it again because I fully don't understand... Like, I kind of still don't get the... Uh, how they re how they fully revealed Charles Axel... Miles Axelrod to be... Uh, to be the head of the Lemons. I... 
even when even when Mayor broke it all down, for some reason I'm still confused on how he figured it out. I <laughs> I I need to watch it more closely. Anyway, okay, next, Brave. Soundtrack in this one was real good. Touch the sky, touch the sky. I think is my favorite one favorite one from here. Um, okay, I'll put it in good and, and it's better than Cars Two in my opinion. All right, Brave is pretty good. And <sighs> look, I like how Merida is a redhead in this one, and I like the hair. It it she stands out from other Disney princesses. She stands out on her own. Um, I just ah uh, this this movie doesn't get a lot of recognition, in but it is what it is. Favorite character in the movie Merida. Um. The story, the story, the story is good. Story is good. Um, let's see. Um, this one follows the, the thing of turning somebody into a bear, and Oy vey, hey, Merida, Merida set herself up for that, for her, set that problem up herself, not being specific. Because, look, if there is one thing that you should know about asking for wishes or or stuff like that you need to be specific you need to be specific as possible you can't leave it up to interpretation Ugh. because that that wish that wish that she asked for that was so general anyone could, anyone could have read it as anything uh monsters university y'all have seen my Hopefully y'all have seen my reaction to Rockatar's video on Monsters University. And for that, I'm gonna put this in. I'm pro, I want to put this in best because this became after like like really looking at the message and seeing it again. This is honestly to an extent better than Monsters Inc. to to me. Um, I'll put it right here. I'll put it under under Red too and all that because oh my gosh because. The message, yeah, it really rings true with Mike Wazowski, which in this movie, he's my favorite character. Um, Sully is a great side character in this one. I like how, like I said, with this, switching the the um, POV of the main character to the side character for, for the sequel well, can be used to great effect. And to me, Monsters University, he, that one's a good example. Um... Mike putting all his eggs in one basket and not working out it just rings so true to real life because you can't put all your all your eggs in one basket and you can't you have to something we all have to understand is that there are things we will we will be able to, there are things we are great at there are things we are good at okay at and things we're bad at and stuff things we have no talent for for we have to accept that harsh truth for like i can like for example for myself i personally can accept the fact that i can never never make i can never make a song okay because because it the idea of making original notes original music i have no idea i have i'm completely blank on that i'm completely blank on it like when i hear new songs whether it be old ones that i'm just discovering or new songs that come out i'm like these are nice songs nice beats and all that i i just know i could never make something as good good as so as as that um there are many other things where it's like like there are some endeavors in life you may have to just give up and work with what you can and 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 then i like the perspective that it uses like the person who worked hard worked the hardest harder than anyone and still didn't make it and that is true that because honestly this like a disney movie would have done it like if you work hard, the hardest for your dreams, you can achieve it, and that that's true. But there, but Monsters University puts a spotlight on you can work the hardest, you can put in the most hours, you can do everything and still not 
get it. You can still fail. And I love that. I love that it, it just hits you with that message and it doesn't pull back its punches. But it also tells you not to give up. It tells you to look for other opportunities. So, soundtrack is also very, very good. Okay, inside out, inside out. Okay, I'm going to put this in excellent. I'm going to put this in excellent, honestly. And I'll put it above cars because is it better than cars? Is it? Yeah, on an emotional level, it's better than cars. It's better, it's better. So I'm going to put this in excellent. Inside out, very good one. Um, So, because I um, I personally can relate to Riley because my family has moved here and there multiple times in my in the first in the first eight no 17 18 years I'm 22 right now so in the first 17 18 years of my of my life we moved around a lot and in the not in the near near future but possibly the like some point in the future one if I move out myself or if my family wants to move somewhere else we may move again so the topic of changing the topic of change and and getting used to new environments meeting new people rings true to to me sorry um and the kinds of emotions that can come from that and i feel like i i i was able to adjust where i could make new friends i could meet new people it, it just, there was a slight bit of hesitation trying to get used to to it but once i once i was in it i basically rolled with it made new friends met new people full adjusted when it came to my siblings however i feel like um it hit them a bit harder where where it hit them more like how riley was in the movie like i feel like 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 it that experience with riley didn't happen to me but i feel like it, it happened to an extent with my siblings um joy be joy ending up being more of an antagonist or a hindrance to, to riley oh i understand this and i need to watch it i need to watch inside out again and fully get the message behind it because the messaging behind it saying that that the emotion we all want to be happy that is absolutely true but the fact that emotions of sadness, fear, disgust, and anger are also important and that they need to be be felt is very true. I hate having to admit that, but it's true. The fact that sadness is needed at, at times, is, sadness will come in your life, anger, or fear, natural emotion like we all um like the song um i don't think i can even say i don't think i can even say it say it because of copyright or whatever but everyone wants to be happy everyone wants to be happy and have clear skies by sun sun like sun but um but the the dark days and times will come and it's just as important because because it going through times of anger times of sadness for example going through grief or betrayal depression it can it tests you it either it tests you in a way where you either crumble and fall or you build yourself up strengthen yourself and push through you either become you change one way or the other through it you either become weaker or you get stronger it's up to you and how you do it but this is what yes inside out is a very good film and i think i yes they i believe they are doing inside out too and i'm personally hoping that it's either okay it can either be teenager riley or adult riley you can do either one of these and i'd be fine with it either one of those two because I would say fast forward to the puberty puberty thing like like we're playing off of that that uh 
playing off of the puberty button that was at the end of the movie. However, I do feel like you all know what I'm talking about. An obvious, an obvious movie at, near the end of the list already technically feel, fills that role. So, um, this this movie also doesn't have uh, movie bloopers. I think a few interesting concepts and stuff could have happened if it were to go that way in here. But otherwise, another good movie from Pixar. The Good Dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur. Okay. Okay. I am putting this above Brave and Cars 2 because I personally really like The Good Dinosaur. Many people didn't. Said it was a letdown. And I can understand why. Because the posters, the po like mainly the posters for this movie falsely advertised this so hard. Because Spot looked like he was going to be a more like a either young adult, teenager, something like that. And Arlo was going to be grow, grown up or they would grow up together. And this did not do that whatsoever. Oh, I feel, I feel almost betrayed. But the visuals in The Good Dinosaur, the visuals, especially the firefly scene at night, that is, that is amazing. That is an amazing, amazing scene. And the heartfelt moments in the movie are also very good um and i like the question that they pose like what the meteor that hit the earth millions of years ago missed just i like how i personally like the premise of that um so okay so um favorite character in the movie i think arlo's my fate arlo's my favorite spot is my favorite side char character they're, they're a fun dynamic, and I love the, uh, I love the, the, the split up they have at the end of the movie, because it was, like, from before, earlier in the movie, where Arlo didn't want to let Spot go, and then he does, good character development, um, and then, Arlo basically, Arlo basically goes through a, a Simba moment, watching his father die, the only, I don't know which one is worse, I don't know which one it like oh which one is worse Simba watching his father fall to his death and finding out he was killed 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 like or or Arlo see like yeah arguably that yeah that one is Arlo like <sighs> Papa's death eh, is Arlo's fault and Arlo saw the look at like the saw his father look at him one last time before he died and I'm like oh I honestly feel like in the moment I think Arlo those Arlo's experiences were is worse <laughs> cause he gotta live with that <laughs> woo uh, and the um not much to say about the not not that much to say about the the soundtrack but the uh cinematography he, like the setting was beautiful beautiful setting all right next finding dory finding dory this is a good one um do i want to say it's excellent yeah, yeah i'll put it in excellent i'll put it in excellent it's a good one um again another character shift shifting it to dory or another Got no problem with it. They did a good job of answered the question about Dory's par parents. It's because literally in Finding Nemo, Dory literally just you just plant her into the plot. Like there is there are a few movies where like other movies where that where it does this where it takes a side character and just throws them in at random. Um, doesn't really work. And I and I it gives me it's a pet peeve of my my when you throw in a character or. Like just out of nowhere, or just hoping that it works. Dory is the best case example where you just threw them into the, threw them into the plot, and it works great. It works perfectly. So, Dor Dory in this movie very, very good. Um, favorite character in here, Dory. Yeah, yeah. I'll give the favorite shift. The favorite character in this movie, Dory. Um, I do see what people say where the character dynamic between Marlin and Dory in this film doesn't seem like it it like grew that much between the between the first movie and this one. And I can see that. Um, 
but I forgive it. I can forgive it for that. Um, favorite side character, Marlin Nemo, obviously, but original character, like, probably favorite original character, probably ha tied between Hank and Destiny. Yeah, very nice. Um, it was nice to see Crush in, like, Crush in the first movie is epic. Crush, seeing Crush again in Fighting Door was awesome. I only wish we got to see Bruce and the other shark, shark arcs in here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Look, if it's a series or a movie, I'm so, I don't care. Can we please get the, the tank gang? Gil and the, the tank gang, please. Can we please get them to buy Nemo again? Can we get them? Because literally in Finding Dory, they come at the very end, they show up. And now they're in the Institute. I'm like, can we please give them a break? Can we get the entire crew together? Because I know that um, Marlon, Dory, they, they never fully met the tank gang. They only saw them in that one scene in, in the dentist's office. Can we please let them finally fully meet each other? Or please, like, whether it be a movie or a TV series. Just come on. Unforgettable. Unforgettable at the end of Finding Dory is, is my favorite song in there. Apart from what a, be what a Wonderful World, which is <laughs> more of an, uh, like, like, it's more of the obvious choice, but for me, I prefer Unforgettable. Cars 3. Is return to form. A, return, a good return to form. I'm going to put this behind Dory in excellent. Because... Jackson Storm is a villain that he's the, he's like he's like Chick Hicks, but the one I prefer. Okay, Jackson Storm is the villain I love to I love to hate, but like he's the one I feel I love to hate, but I also like him. Like I love his character design. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, but if you give me an option to either, if you give me an option to buy a a drivable model, drivable model of Lightning McQueen or Jackson Storm. My brother can have Lightning McQueen. I'm driving Jackson Storm. I'm driving Jackson Storm. His design is just so sleek and cool to me. Ugh. Uh, Cruz Ramirez. At first, I I thought that Cruz Ramirez was going to be a potential um love triangle like a, a love a second love interest like one-sided for lightning mcqueen in in that obviously shot it down uh, which is good which is good um they pushed the fact that lightning mcqueen is getting old so much i'm like it was it was played as a joke and for me it worked but i can also see how it could be like it's not he's not that old why are you treating him treating him this way anyway um ah next uh Soundtrack, pretty good. Soundtrack is pretty good in this one. I can't really, like, I remember Beats It in it, like, like, Ride, 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 right, for the end credits. That's the one I remember. Pretty much almost everything else I don't really remember, but the animation in this one is very good. Uh, and the intro, the, the teaser for Cars 3 with Lightning McQueen crashing, oh, that, that was a great way to get people's attention. My opinion. That was one way to get you intrigued about the movie. Coco. Coco. I'm gonna put Coco. I'm gonna put it in excellent behind up because it's very heartfelt. It's a very heartfelt movie. It's in the twist again, the twist villain in this movie is good. It's good. It plays on the perception of the main character and the audience greatly. You always and then like the perception of the care of of the villain before, like what everyone thinks of him and who he actually is, is excellently done. Um, the message of fa of family is also very good in this one, and the thought and the this uh the theme of uh mexican culture is also very good in this one um 
Un Poco Loco. Oh, excellent song. Remember Me, Heartfelt. Oh, I didn't cry from it, but but I wanted to. I wanted to. Uh, I feel like there's one more song that was in, in here, but I can't remember what it is. If this... If Coco had um, movie bloopers at the end, oh my goodness, I could th like there could be a few references you could make, make and funny scenes you could do. Incredibles two, Incredibles two, worth the wait, worth the wait. Eight. Of course, I'm one of the people who was like, if you waited just one, like one more year, you'd be 15 years too late, too late. Echoing, echoing syndromes lines. Okay, I'm gonna put this. Yeah, it's to me it's better than up. Is it better than Finding Nemo? Yeah, I'll put it up there. Is it better than Bugs Life? Yeah, I'll put it above that. Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Ooh, okay, I'll leave it right there. I'll leave it right there. I'll leave it right there. I'll leave the Gremlins 2 right there. Right there in the middle of excellent. Because I can't... Re I don't know if I really want to say it's better than Monsters Inc. Inc. of Cars. Um, but Incredibles 2... is inside. It's inside out there. I'm going to leave it where it is. I'll leave it where it is. Incredibles 2, to me, was real good. Now, twist. let's start with the twist villain. Evelyn, De Evelyn Dever. My a friend of mine saw the twist coming a mile away. Apparently, I am one of the people. I did not see it. I did not see it coming. I was looking at Winston the whole time. Ever since the trailers, I just saw Winston, and I'm like, he screed slaver. I just, I was, I, I had my mindset on Winston being screed slaver, and I didn't shift. It. I'm like. Like you seem too e you seem too eager to have the super villains back, and you seem like the right build for that screen slaver person. So, so I was so focused on that, and e and then somebody had to then my friend had to tell me like she had to break it down to me like when saying Evelyn Dever Evelyn Dever Evil Endeavor. I'm like, oh okay, I see it. I did not make that connection me personally. Um, shifting the, shifting the focus to Miss Incredible, Mrs. Incredible, good choice, good choice, boys, okay, shifting the, like, it seems to be a trend, it's a, it's a trend with, like, so when people, oh my goodness, some people even pulled the, pulled woke out of their mouth to say, like, Incredibles 2 is woke, and I'm like, ugh. There are only certain projects and movies and shows where I'm like, yes, I see what you're where you're getting at. I see what you're saying. And I see it. This is one where I'm like, this is one of those examples where that word is just very annoying. It has no place in this in this argument, in my personal opinion, because if you look at pre at the previous at least character shifts. In the previous, some of the previous franchises, Cars One to Cars Two character shift from Lightning McQueen to Mater, Finding Nemo to Finding Dory shifted from Nemo and Marlin to Dory. Wait, Toy Story, Toy Story Two, I think you would shift it like the focus was more on Buzz. I would say the main character focus was a bit more on Buzz, and then Toy Story Two, who gave it a bit more of a shift to Woody. Monsters Inc. Sully, Monsters University, Mike. Like you see this, this is a this is a trend in Pixar where with its sequels, when any ones that get sequels, they shift the character, the main character around. So, so the Incredibles going from Mr. Incredible to Mrs. Incredible makes sense. It's it it's it's in line with what Pixar has done in the past, and it's good because. The first movie focused on Bob so much, we can get some focus on Miss Incredible on her own. Like, we only get a little bit of that in the first movie, and it's all about her trying to find Bob and save, save him. him. This gave us a different dynamic on that. 
Oh, ew. Wait, the animation in the movie, excellent, eh? excellent, eh? hey, Jack Jack, Jack Jack and the rep. oh my goodness, They're, I love their references to the Jack Jack attack, Pixar short, I, I love it from the start of the movie and throughout, oh, um, the, again, the animation is so good, and I can honestly see, like, how Pixar and Disney themselves, they were showing off what they could do with their animation. For example, with Violet's powers and with the, um, the blow dry, like how Violet was blow drying her hair. Because compared to, okay, one Brave was an achievement in itself with, with how her curly hair was each individually different. But how how Violet's hair could be, go through a blow dryer and look like real hair be blown. It's like, like y'all show it off and I'm not mad at it. Anyway, um... The action in Incredibles 2 was great. Um, and then, I think, I'll, I will leave the Pixar theory out of this, out of this thing. I will leave it out of this, for like, out of this tier list. I'm going to leave the Pixar theory out of this, out of this. Because I do believe, I believe in it. it but if I do that, this will be even longer than it already is. If I start talking about the Pixar theory. So, soundtrack, also very good. I love how they repeated musical beats in the ending from the first one, and just re they remixed it to make it unique to this one. I like that. Alright, next. Toy Story 4! Or, while they wait for Tom Hanks to make Toy Story 4. Oh yeah, I'm probably gonna get copyrighted for that. Um, okay. P P this, is, this is a bear... To me, this is either a 50 50 coin flip or something like that or or possibly worse because many people didn't like some people or many people didn't like this move like this one oh, i'm also gonna yeah does it yes i'm gonna put toy story 4 in best and i'm going to put it oh, dang. i'm gonna yeah i'll put it below toy story 3 because bringing back bo peep Yes, thank you. We can resolve that. We can resolve the fact that Woody has a love interest, and they took it. They he had her in two movies, and then took her away in the third. Fixed it in the fourth. Um. Now the thing about Andy, yes, if we address that, I would want to see what happens. But the reason I say is like, tell me, like. There are very few children that are given a toy, toy from someone, whether it be from, as a gift or something like that, and that specific toy becomes their absolute favorite thing ever, ever, and they never get rid of it no matter what they do. Now, Andy is an example with Woody where that's false, but, like, not every kid is like that, that, because some kids get gifts get these toys from people and forget about them the next day so to me bonnie like bonnie not taking not loving andy the way that loving woody sorry the way andy did is completely it makes complete sense to me it makes complete sense to me and and how this movie was very much about woody needing to find a new purpose needing to find a new purpose now that his main role is done his main role from the first three films is done and i like that because with toy story three the first three he had a defining role and in toy story four since that trilogy is done un they sh shift it they change and shift it and i like that the ending also had me in tears. The second, the second Buzz said Bonnie will be okay, I immediately, like I, my brain was recognizing what they were implying of doing, and it, I started to cry and cry throughout the credits, just like Toy Story three. And to me, like I, one thing that went through my mind when seeing Toy Story four, if you. One, if you chose to do this, Pixar, usually when they do sequels, they have an idea in mind, and they, they want to do it. They want to do it. In comparison to Disney, where 
if they see a movie is successful, they're gonna pump out pump out uh, sequels like nobody's business. Is with <laughs> whether it be theatrical or directed DVD sequels. So, so I'm wondering, like, after you broke our hearts with the ending of Toy Story three, how would you do in Toy Story four? And the fact, and once they, once the voice actors said that they cried doing this movie, that had me worried, and I see why. So to me, I, I love Toy Story four because I like how it changed. Because okay, I remember. Okay, I think it either YouTube comments or um, either in YouTube comments or somewhere, I got into a, a bit of a discussion with somebody saying like Toy Story Four, Woody um, betrayed everything he stood for, and I asked why because because he was loyal to the end and stuff like that. Yes, he was. He was loyal to Andy to the end, and yes, but the thing is like. Toy Story 4 expanded on something from the very first movie. The very first movie show, oh, showed how Woody, for a second, felt about being a lost toy. That's something he never would want to be. He, he's being a lost toy. Even Toy Story 2. He's fine not having a... He, on the... Like, for a moment, he is fine not having an owner as long as he has a purpose as long as he has a role to fill in toy story 4 he finds a new purpose as the one thing he never thought he'd be a lost toy and he's with the one the one person he he's loved and i really appreciate that then when we get to the villain uh abby i think i think abby is her name i believe that shift where she's not really she's not even a villain She's not even a villain. She's she's just like an antagonist to an extent. He's she's an antagonist up until the third act of the movie. And I think that was that was well done. That was well done. I like that. Um So So people are always there like and then uh Forky. Okay, Forky. My basic thing is like when a child, basically almost like almost like Disney, when a child loves a toy, or the the love and imagination of a child, go like with a toy and believes in it, loves it, that brings it life. That that's what brings it life, at least in my eyes. And if they if Pixar never answers that question, that's fine. If they never answer it, that's okay. That is okay. Um. Uh, next so uh, okay yeah I think that's it onward haven't seen it haven't seen all onward I have not seen onward so I ain't got nothing to say about it soul oh this was a pretty good one this was a pretty good one um yeah I say nah, I, don't wanna see. I don't think it's that it's excellent but it's very good um it's, so the story behind it is deep it's it's a deep one. It, it requires, it, it's honestly philosophical, honestly. It, talking about existence, finding your per, finding a purpose is again, um, almost hitting on the beats of Monsters University in a different way, not putting all of your, all your eggs into one basket, giving up, like for example, getting so caught up in one thing that you don't move, move or progress anywhere. So, and then 23, I think, I believe that's her name, uh, 23 in this movie. Oh, I honestly wonder, I honestly wonder who she is, who he or she, they, whatever they became when they went to the real world. I wonder what it is. I wonder what they are. And if, if we ever get an answer to that, that would be cool. That would be cool. Um. Yeah, I like the topic of the great beginning and the great beyond. Oh, it's <laughs> interesting. I like how I I like how they visualize it. It's very, I liked how they visualized it. Um, and the top, like soul, obviously, like soul music. 
very good because one of my favorite instruments to listen to and one I honestly want to learn to play in the, at some point in my life is the saxophone. And many people say, especially my mom, that I have like long fingers that can do a piano. So I guess that's worth a shot. Uh, soundtrack was was good. good. Luca. Luca. If you've oh, if you've seen my shorts, the shorts I made years ago when this first came out on Disney Plus, you would know how how much I feel about this. I'm going to put Luca. Yeah, I'm going to put Luca up here next to Toy Story and Best because this is one of my favorite Pixar movies of all time. It just reminds me so much of my childhood. It reminds me. Sorry for for the barking of my dog. Um, it just reminds me of of the friends that I've made in my life. I like the many friends I've had. Like I've made the ones I've had to leave when moving from place to place, but the ones that I still have, many of them I still have their contact information. I try to I try to reach out to them when I can, and and to me they're still fr still my friends. It's just this movie, the movie was a very very safe, campy almost thing. And I like that. And then the ending just brought me to tears. So and I'm happy to, to watch it again and again. I do wish we got a little bit more world building with the sea with the sea monster, like their um, world, what their world is like. But because we mainly focus on on the on the humans and the surface world world. But but they did enough. Uh, they did enough explanation just to say like like this is how Luca lives, this is how he is, is but he wants to be here. Very much like a uh, Little Mermaid, very much. But very and soundtrack is also very nice. And there's a certain argument about this movie there's a certain argument about this movie I don't want to get into. This is a, there's a certain argument I just don't want to get into. Alright. All right, the reason three, the reason three, turning red, turning red. Whew. I'm putting turning. Uh, I'm gonna put turning red in best. I'm gonna put turning red best under, under Toy Story four, four, because I like I like this one. The soundtrack. Soundtrack is a is a beggar. I I don't care what nobody says. Oh my gosh. I, I wish Luca and Turning Red got theatrical releases. Now granted, Luca came out I believe during the pandemic and I believe Turning Red came out shortly after the pandemic. Oh, but I wish they got theatrical releases. Oh, because I would want to see some of these scenes in the movie, especially Turning Red. Soundtrack is a banger. Nobody like you did it on my own, like or on my own, and and one true love. Oh my gosh, I oh oh I I, I want to hear more song. I want to hear more songs for from Four Town. And if they make a sequel to Turning Red, please, I I would want it. Cause okay, the message of Tur Turning Red, um. Touches a tiny bit. It touches a bit on generational trauma, which I ain't got a problem with. I enjoy it. I enjoy that. Um, um and I, can we please? Can people please talk up the stuff? Y'all are complaining now, saying because we gotten three three movies pretty much in a row about oh generational trauma that it's overstayed as well. Shut, shut up. Goodness, is come on. On uh, yes, okay, having a shift here and there is fine. Yes, but. Oh, but y'all say it's overstayed. Overstayed is welcome for getting annoyed. Each time Encanto did to a Encanto did was the basis of the movie. That that was a big thing in the movie. It, Turning red was a it was a very small side side part of it. And then what is the third movie? The third movie I'm thinking of. I think it's a, oh Strange World. I'm sorry, Strange World does it too too. 
who like Encanto is the example of generational trauma where it's the plot of the movie he, 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 Turning Red is where it's a, a little bit it's a small part of it but it's not the main thing and Strange World is right there in the middle where, where it's a mix between the two it's right there in the middle um anyway favorite care okay wait a minute i'm forgetting stuff favorite character in toy story 4 buzz yeah no 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 the favorite favorite character in toy story 4 is woody because buzz takes a second secondary character role more often and i like uh i like like woody's story in toy story 4 favorite character in incredibles 2 mrs incredible favorite character in luca luca all right i think i'm good I think, I'm, I think I'm good with that. Um, favorite character in Turning Red, May, hands down. Um, the crew, like, um, oh darn it, Abby. Okay, Abby. Oh, darn it. Ah, no, the, oh my gosh, Abby. Oh my gosh, Priya and. Priya and uh, darn it, I forgot her name. Oh, uh, darn it! You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I love the the dynamic between her fr May's friends because each of these are members of a crew that you want. One is one is like all technically almost the leader. They tell like they give you ideas, say what we should do, ooh, ooh, stuff like that. Priya is is the one who's got your back, like twice now, twice twice in the movie. Priya Priya was the backup person who had what you what May needed. Like Priya is the Priya is the goth like near goth girl or like. Like homie that you need, he's, he's like when you just randomly need deodorant because you smell and they got they got they have some you can borrow. That that's excellent. Um, Turning red also Turning red also taught me if I ever have children, I am not. Oh my goodness, if I ever have children, I am not going to be like um, May's mom. I am not going to embarrass. I, I would like I'll embarrass my children regardless because that's just what dad and parents do. But I'm not gonna embarrass them the way May's mom did. Oh my goodness, that's a, that that kind of embarrassment isn't funny. That ain't funny. That ain't funny. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, and then the second like the way the second the teaser trailer show, showed May turned into a pet, it was already very seemed relatable to me because of the like almost embarrassing mom um um that's already one thing but may turning into a red panda that was like i'm watching this movie i'm watching this movie you got me hooked i'm in um and then when it comes to boy band like the topic of boy bands um all like recently before that i started listening to backstreet boys I already knew about InSync only because of Bye Bye Bye, and that's the only song I know about from them. So I'm more of a Backstreet Boys guy. <laughs> oh. So, anyway, um, but the overarching message of becoming detached from your parents because when you turn like 13, 13 going into 15, and so on, you start disconnecting yourself not having so much of a grip on your parents as you did as a kid and you start branching out and and being with your friends more going wanting your own independence and stuff of it was a very to me it's a very good movie it, it was it was a very good movie had a very good message that hit, hits for both parents and adults and another thing can what was the, what the heck was everyone's issue with what was what the heck was the issue with turning red being a metaphor for puberty? What the heck was y'all's problem with that? 
Like, I ain't got, like, what? I ain't got a problem with it. With it. Oh, my God. And then, oh, the people who said, people, like, you wouldn't be able to relate to me because she's a teenage girl. What the heck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Bro, bro, dude. I can think of multiple shows with female leads, girl, women girl leads that people love. Oh, okay, I haven't seen this show, but but I know it has a big fan base. Owl House, Amphibia, uh, let's see, Powerpuff Girls, My Life as a Teenage Robot, iCarly, Victorious, Hannah Montana, oh my goodness, Hunger, Ga Hunger Games. Oh man. Oh, no, I can think of more. I can think of more. I can think of more. Oh, yeah, female leads, female leads. Come on. Come on. Um, okay. Arguably, good luck, good luck, Charlie. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, okay, movie. Disney, the Disney princess lineup, okay? There are, there are plenty of guys out there who like the Disney princess movies. Me included. Me included. Include, included. Include. Obvious one, Mulan, Moana, uh, oh, fro Frozen, even Frozen, even um, Lilo and Stitch, ooh, Lilo and Stitch, Lilo and Stitch, the series. Ooh, ooh. So when people want to pull that argument that because the lead is a is a girl, you boys can't relate to her. <laughs> oh, oh. And then, okay, now, the topic of puberty, yes, is uncomfortable, but it's a conversation that needs to be had, and, and it's something we need to know at some point, and I love the fact that Terry Red exists, and it, and it, do, and it exposes, is, it exposes a girl's, a girl's experience with puberty, including the topic of pads, because it happens. It's going to happen, and and you don't want to be like May's mom, where in this in this example is the red panda, where she knew it was going to happen and didn't say a word. There, are, I can't I, like there, are, there. I know there's gonna be there are countless numbers of examples of actual families. With daughters who experience puberty and didn't know what was going on, and because their moms didn't speak on it and or didn't say anything until it was too late, that it could have all been avoided if there was communication, more open communication, or trusting your child to understand the information. Oh, oh, and, oh. and secondly. Anyone with parents of sons saying this is something my boys don't need to know. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because one, if they ever want, if they ever want to date, if they ever want to get married, if they have sisters, sisters, if they have female friends, they will understand what's going on. They ain't go going to be insensitive <laughs> about it. Okay. If they choose to still make jokes about it, that's all them. But if they don't know what's going on, <sighs> oh. I, I just really appreciate Terry Red on multiple levels, okay? I just I appreciate that movie on multiple levels. That it exists. One of Disney's, I mean, one of Pixar's best. Pixar's best. Okay, now, sorry, that was a long tangent. Lightyear, Lightyear. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what anyone says. Okay, where am I putting this? Where am I putting this? It, because as I, I personally feel, I'm gonna put it above. I'm gonna put it above Toy Story right now because depending on the day, depending on the day, and you can look at my, you can look at my uh, short, re like my YouTube short review of Lightyear after I got out of the theater. I still feel as I do. Ooh, this movie is peak. Okay, I want to say peak, but once I finish this, then I'll I'll pick which one is peak Pixar. But this is a um, to me. As a Buzz Lightyear fanboy, this movie is amazing. When it fell, when it dropped on Disney Plus, I watched it three times in the weekend that it came out. I watched it three times, three times. I will watch it for fun. I will watch it just. Oh, I love, I like, the, I love this movie. I love this movie. 
Uh, Chris Evans and Chris Evans as Buzz Lightyear works in this movie. I like how they address the fact that Buzz actually has hair. They because one kind of question I had in my mind was: Is Buzz basically half human, half alien? Like, is the is that purple spot on him? Is is it his skin or is it his suit? They address that that at the the Lightyear the Space Ranger suit looks beautiful. Socks is a great. A side char character, her funny throughout. <sighs> Favorite character in the movie, Buzz, hands down. The twist villain with with older Buzz is Zerg. Erg, yes, I enjoy enjoy it. Oh yeah, you play with the time tra travel aspect. I'm cool with that. And it also deals with the idea of focusing is focusing so much on one thing that you don't look at. You're looking forward, looking up, looking down, whatever. So much you're not looking at what's right in front of you. Oh, oh man. So I really like this movie. Granted, granted, it could could it be better? Maybe, maybe it could, could. But oh man, this 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 movie was excellent. Best, one of the best Pixar movies I've ever seen in my eyes. And they left the door open to see what the actual Zerk, who the actual Zerg is, and just so happens is that at the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, Buzz's line is like, uh, "Buzz like your mission, like date four zero seven one, on." So the movie takes place like in that in that timeline like in the movie of that universe. It takes place the day before, like. Like in Buzz's mindset, the day before Toy Story 3 won. Until where when Buzz Lightyear opens up, he says, Star Date 4072. Oh, the multiple references. There were even references to Buzz Lightyear of Star Command Ed, with the number 42. There were references to stuff. Oh, and if, oh, okay. Of course, my first thought was that they would do an adaptation of the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command TV show in a movie format, but I'm fine with what they did. If they ever reference it in a sequel movie because Berserk is still alive, please, let's do it. I'm down. Oh. Oh. Needless to say, I love this movie. <laughs> Woo. Elemental. I watched this movie recently on Disney Plus. That's when it came on Disney Plus because I missed the chance to see it in theaters in June. So, Elemental. I'm honest. Is it? Oh, the animation is fluid and gorgeous in Elemental. Oof. The, again, okay, this is a different point, but the message of why does everyone get to tell you what you want to do again yes it's a story that's been done before but i don't care here because the execution of something is all the difference wally like i said out like maybe an hour ago by now is an example the the story can be similar or basically this copy and paste but the execution is what is what makes all the difference so elemental I think I'm gonna put it in best and I'm gonna put it right for right now because I've seen it once. I need to see it again to confirm. But I'm gonna put it be I'll put it behind turning red. I'm gonna put it behind turning red because I relate to both old Wade and Ember because oh man. Okay, the message with em Ember about you no know, like Listening to your emotions and knowing what you may or may not want to do with your life life hits me personally because since school since high since high school and middle school I always felt pressure on my I put pressure on myself as a professionist to get straight A's to to get straight A's one hundred percent no matter what. I didn't care how much how much I hurt myself for it. But because I wanted my parents to be proud of me. I just thought that the best way to make my parents proud of me was to get straight A's, to get to get on honor roll, stuff like that. 
Whenever I had less than that, when I had a B, I did everything I could to bring it up. If I had a C, I felt like a failure. In my mindset, I don't, only one time in my life do I ever think I got a D in something. And it was, and it was I think, graphic design, something I was very, very, very bad at. And, it was, and I still hated myself for it. But whenever I felt that way, whenever I felt that way, my mom would say this, but also because my dad said this. My dad said this to me, and my relationship with my my dad is is I have different feelings about it, but I still lo- love him with all my heart. And the uh, the the heartfelt expression that Ashva or Bernie gives to Ember that. This is the shop isn't the dream. You were the dream. I had conversations like that with my father. He says this to me all the time. He says this more times than I could count. And I appreciate him and love him so much for it that he's told me that as long as I did my best, that I gave it what I could, that's all he wants from me. And I and my mom said the same thing. thing. As long as I did my best and they've seen me do my best, that's all they can ask of me and that like and yes i i have i have two black parents okay i have two black parents making this clear but like i've i've been in scenarios where i felt like i i was where i wasn't doing the best and that i'm like i'm a failure i'm a disappointment and my parents would say did you ask me did you do your best did you do all that you could and i answered yes i did and they say that's all we want from you that's all we want from you we don't want you to have this we don't want you to feel pressured that um even to this day my parents say to me like you don't need to always look to us for our approval that you already have it like you already have our love and approval and i just have to remind myself that often and then with wade i i I, um i relate to it because one i have i still have my father with me and i honestly fear the day if i ever if and when if and when i ever lose him but my relationship with my mom with my mom is very much very much like wade and his mom we have a very similar relationship and um, with Wade's sister at least dating, my sister is currently in a relationship. Like she started, my younger sister, right, having relationships, is and it's a new experience for me. You having to look out for my si- sister from people who may who want, who who I am hoping and then actively watching have her best interest in mind. Um. Favorite character in the movie? I'm tied between Ember and Wade. I wish Claude was in the movie more because he was excellent on the very few scenes that he was in. In I wish he was in it more. Um. And okay, Claude's pickup lines. I don't give a darn. I don't care. Claude's pickup lines were excellent. Like an act of God or an act of Claude. That was nice, but my favorite, my favorite pickup line that he had was, "If you were a vegetable, you'd be a cute, a cute cumber." That made me laugh, and that's like, bro, even, even if, like, even if I ever had a crush, if I ever get a crush, and I wanted to say something like, that, I'd honestly want to use that pickup line like right there. I don't care. I don't care if if it's corny as that. I would use I'd use that because <laughs> that was excellent. Um, steal the show. The song from the steal the show was very good. I liked it. And the ro okay the romance in Elemental that was nice. I liked liked it. Oh, they're very spicy. A very spicy mo- movie to be. Um, um. So, in the animation, the the um, experimentation they do with the elements, I love it, especially with water and fi- fire. Um, but but it makes me curious about if we if we do get a sequel, I want to know about um, I want to know 
we know okay we have clouds we have clouds now what happens like does anything happen with a tornado or what about the element it, the element of light of lightning or element of rock like it do, are those any are any of those elements it's like like that's something i would want to know and then um the thought the like is there an element of like almost like magma lava like i want to see more elements i want to see more of the elemental world oh very much so okay so that is all of P the pixar movie haven't seen onward okay cars 2 yeah brave okay the dinosaur soul yeah i can put it there cars 3 is it better than soul yeah in my opinion uh dory yeah coco yeah up yeah Finding Nemo, yeah. Bugs Life, yes. Um, Incredibles 2, yeah. Uh, in Monsters Inc., yes. Cars, yes. Inside Out, yeah, I'm fine with that there. Toy Story 2, yeah, I can live with it. Yeah, I can have it there. Monsters University, yeah. Ratatouille, yes. Wally, yeah. Elemental, yeah, I, I'm comfortable with that. that. Turning Red, yeah. Toy Story 4, yes. Toy Story 3, yes. Incredibles, yes. Luca, yes. Toy Story 3, yes. Lightyear. Now, peak Pixar. Now, I'm going to use out of these three. <sighs> out of Luca, Toy Story, Lightyear. <sighs> hmm. Peak. Peak Pixar. As much as much as I want to put Lightyear in peak Pixar, as much as I would love to put in peak Pixar, for multiple reasons, for multiple reasons I want to put Lightyear in peak. I want to give peak Pixar to Toy Story because it started it off. We wouldn't have Lightyear if it wasn't for Toy Story. We would like Toy Story started off all of Pixar. Pixar. We all started with Toy Story. So, oh, I'm going to give it to, to Toy Story 1 as peak Pixar art. Like, started off great, great. Now, yeah, that's my personal, my personal peak. peak the sit, the very, like, very close sit, second, second, or if equal, equal is light year to me. Like, the current state of Pixar Lightyear is the equal, equally, like, almost equal peak to me. Um, yeah, I look forward to, to Elio, Elio coming out, I think, next year, year from Pixar. Or I look forward to other stories that they, they have up their sleeve. It's like, Disney is pressuring them to do Toy Story 5, so, if that's the case, he's, I would either, you do a prequel, do a prequel with Andy's father. Do a prequel with Andy's dad. Explain that. Eh? Or just do a time or a time skip to the fu future or something like that. Um. Now movies that could use a movie blooper. Um, a lot of these could. Turning Red. I would really want to see that. I would want to see how, like that would have been a funny one. That would be a funny one. Um. Anyway, uh, movies that I think should get a sequel. Luca stands on its own. It can it can stand it can live on its own. Lightyear, I would like a sequel for that. Turning Red, I would I would like a sequel for that. Elemental, I'd like a sequel. Wally is fine. Ratatouille is fine. Um, let's see. Inside Out, we're getting a sequel. I look forward to it. Bugs Life, I would really like one. If they did do a sequel to Bugs Life, I think that would be cool. Cool. For example, I mean, uh, they'd be they'd be playing the same story beats as, like, like telling the story of Dot, like Dot becoming queen, becoming queen. It'd be almost the same story beats, but I think it would be something interesting. Brave stands on its own. Good Dinosaur stands on its own. Soul. If it's 23, if it's whoever 23 became, yes. Yes, I would want a sequel for that. Um, 
Finding Dor Rory and Finding Nemo. Getting the getting the the tank gang back. Okay. Let them like yes. That yes. Um Yeah. So pretty much Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Okay, Monsters at Work is a very, to me, is a very good se series. And if it got a season two, I'd like it. If it got even a movie, I'd be even more excited. Anyway, anyway, that's just me. <laughs> Thank you, Legends, so much for wa watching. This is going to take me a while. And I, it'll probably be good if I did, did a timestamp of it for these. But I had to go through the entire thing. Thank you all so much for watching. What do you think of my tier list? Which ones of these do you think is peak Pixar? Which one of these do you think I'm completely wrong about? Which one of these would you put lower on, on this list? This, which ones would you shift around? Please let me know. Oh, down in the comment section below. If I missed something, please. if I missed anything about these movies or what you enjoyed about these movies or something about these movies I love that you didn't like or hated, please let me know. Please comment, like, subscribe, share this video. Hope you enjoyed it. React to my madness. Thank you so much for 183 subscribers as of the recording of this video. I will see you in the next one. See y'all later.